Hi everyone, I'm Pamela Tan. I'm the Deputy Director of Admissions at Cornell University and I'm joined by a colleague and a friend, Heather Marcotte from the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Heather, could you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Um, hi, my name is Heather Marcotte. I am the Director of Admissions for the College of Ag and Life Sciences here at Cornell, what we affectionately refer to as CALS. Um, I've been within CALS Admissions since 2011 and I've been Director almost two years now and just truly enjoying my time. So thanks Pamela for having me. Thanks for taking the time to do this. And let's just jump right in here. We've received uh, some questions from students, including one from Sophie, Sophie, who's from New Jersey. And she had asked, what makes CALS truly special and unique? So I could go on probably for our entire session to talk about um, what makes CALS unique, but I'll start with some of the big picture um, items. We're the only, Ivy, or only College of Agriculture in Life Sciences in the Ivy League. And so the resources that we have available to our students because of that is just amazing. And we also have this um, incredible university at our fingertips. So not only do students have the experience within CALS, they can also explore the other six undergraduate colleges here at Cornell. And I think overall, just the uniqueness of our programs, the interdisciplinary nature of our, our majors, um, and the flexibility that students have in exploring and creating an academic pathway that's unique to their interests, again, is something that's truly special about our program. The last piece is our amazing faculty and the experiences that our students have both in and outside of the classroom. They are learning from the very best in their fields and then also being able to apply that knowledge to the real world, whether it's through research, internships, study abroad, and the many opportunities that we have on campus. So it's just a really special place um, that's focused on giving back and tackling big problems and then allowing our students amazing opportunities to do so. So Heather, some of the students that are writing in are concerned about the impact that the pandemic has had on their education. Some students are concerned about not having taken the SAT or the ACT. How will you take that into consideration this year? This has been an extraordinary year and we understand the incredible pressure that our students and our prospective students are under. Um, for this coming year, the College of Ag and Life Sciences has decided to go score not required for both the SAT or the ACT, meaning that we will not be using SATs or ACTs um, in our review of applicants. We will not factor that in regardless of if a student has submitted a score or not, um, and it will be a unique year. Also within our program, we are um, focused on a holistic review. So we will be continuing to look at the other pieces of the application, including transcripts, recommendation letters, essays, the entire package of the, um, a student's application. And um, we'll, we'll be able to kind of find our students through that process, but scores won't be a piece of that puzzle this year. Thank you for that. And how about, you mentioned transcripts as something that you're looking at. Another frequently asked question we're getting is for students who might have had their education interrupted. They might not have grades or they might have grades that don't really reflect how they might have done under normal circumstances. Could you speak to that? Absolutely. Um, so we, again, this is a, an incredible year um, and we're, um, you know, this will be a unique uh, admission cycle for us. For students who have pass-fail grades, or um, like you said, the grades are not reflective of their academic ability, we, are, we just need context. So I think one piece that we'll be looking at and what we want to reassure students is that we look at the entirety of your transcript from freshman year through your senior year. And so we'll be looking at the courses that you selected, um, demonstrating rigor in the context of your high school. We'll be looking at the grades that you have received in those courses. And then we'll also be looking for context from their students um, and provide us with information about the impact that COVID had on your education. We won't know that personal piece unless you share that with us. And so whether it's past field grades or grades that are not reflective of um, your time last semester or even going into this semester, just making sure to share that with us will be very important. So we have another question from Rachel in New York who asks, tell us about the popular majors that CALS has. So we have uh, amazing majors, both large and small. And I, I avoid saying popular because I think depending on the student, everything is popular. Um, so our entomology student is, a, our entomology major is incredible, um, a smaller program, but we also have large programs including biological sciences, animal science, 
communication and environment and sustainability. But I would encourage students that are looking at Cornell Cal's and looking at the, the wide variety of our majors to choose the major that they are most passionate about and really calls out to them. Um, so not focusing on the size of the program, but really focusing on the major that they are most interested in. Because as I said, we really look at not just your transcripts, but at the fit to that program. And we want to make sure that students are applying to and are admitted to a program that they are interested in and excited about. And so I wouldn't focus necessarily on the size of the program, but on um, really the, the core pieces of that program and what calls out to you. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, to follow up on that, we have a question from Nandira in Washington who asks that uh, it sounds like she's interested in a number of majors that are in CALS, but she's not quite sure which one might be the best fit for her. So what would advice would you have for students who are not completely sure which of the awesome majors CALS has would be the best fit? So I'd encourage students who are still kind of navigating which major to choose to definitely do your homework. And this may come up in a few other questions, but to definitely do your homework, go on our website to ask questions um, and apply again to the major that you are really feeling the fit for. Understanding that this is a starting point. We know that choosing a major at 18 or at your, during your freshman year, even as a transfer student may be difficult. Um, and so this major is really a place for you to start. It may not be where you end up at the end of your four years here at Cornell. And there's ample support to help you navigate new interests that may arise, new opportunities. That's the whole point of college is to explore your interests. Some of our students pick a major and they follow it through all the four, all four years and it's exactly what they wanted to do. Some of our students just have an idea. Maybe they're interested in biological sciences or maybe they're interested in agricultural sciences. And once they get here, they have amazing experiences that either solidify that interest or maybe they find a field of study that they never knew existed and they get to explore that further. So there's a lot of different pathways through Cornell and through CALS. Students will have the opportunity to explore coursework outside of our college. Um, they'll also have the opportunity to possibly double major within CALS. They also have the possibility of creating a minor either within CALS or in another uh, our undergraduate colleges. Some students decide to change their major and other students may decide to change their college completely. So there's a lot of different pathways, again, for students to create an education pathway that's unique to them and to their interests and there's support there to help students explore. So we have a question from Jacob from North Carolina who uh, recognizes that CALS may have a special relationship with New York State and may be looking for New York State candidates. So as an out of state student, would it be more difficult for him to gain admission? It's a great question and one that we get quite a bit. And um, it's true that we do have a commitment to New York State and our New York State residents. However, we also have a commitment to geographic diversity across both the country and the globe. And so while um, we, are, we are trying to balance that out, I would say a qualified applicant to CALS is a qualified applicant regardless of where you're living. And we wanna see those applications because we want to have a diversity of students while still um, keeping an eye out for our New York State students. Outstanding, thanks Heather. So I have another question from Erin in New York who asks, about what would you recommend for someone who wants to study pre-vet at CALS? Ooh, good question. Um, so the great thing about Cornell um, is that you can be on a pre-health track and be in any major in any college. And pre-health, I mean pre-vet, pre-med, pre-dental. Um, and it's really because of the fact that we want our students, again, to pursue their passions, not necessarily um, just a, a track to get to a graduate program. And that's also what graduate schools are telling us they want in their students as well, that they've pursued passion rather than just um, a, a schedule of courses. So if you're interested in pre-health or looking specifically at pre-vet, um, you can choose any major at Cornell CALS or Cornell overall and understand that you'll receive additional support to navigate which courses to take for the requirements for graduate program. You'll also receive assistance in navigating the application process. Many of our students that are here within CALS that are interested in pre-vet um, do pursue animal science or biological sciences just because that's where their passions lie. But we've had students in communication, we've had students in the Dyson School, um, in ag science. So it's really important for, again, to focus on your passions and select the major that's fitting those areas, knowing that you will have the support to navigate a pre-health track regardless of where you're, what, what major you select. Great. 
So Gabriel in California asks uh, something that we're, we're getting quite a bit of, which is he specifically noted that there was a biological sciences majors in CALS, but also in arts and sciences. And that's true for a number of majors and uh, that's available in CALS that they're offered in different parts of campus. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference and how should students choose their academic home base? Yeah, this is a question we get a lot and um, you're right panel we have many majors um, that are offered both within cals and other colleges biological sciences being a great example of that but also information science and now our environment and sustainability major as well for students who are looking at a major that's offered in multiple colleges here at cornell our advice is that you not focus um, solely on the courses or the major requirements for that program because in large, those, make, those courses will be the same no matter which college you're in. Those are their major requirements. What's going to differ is going to be the courses and the opportunities and experiences that surround your major and also just the feel of the college. Um, so making sure that if you're interested in, let's say, biological sciences and really looking at animal physiology, let's say, CALS may be a better fit just because our curriculum and our courses um, can support that interest. Um, I'd also encourage students to look at the experiences in terms of what are the offerings for internships, um, study abroad, those may differ as well. Also, the admissions requirements and the graduation requirements will differ between the colleges. So finding the college that's the right fit for you is really going to be the important piece and, and what your focus should be. We all have a little bit different feel across the different colleges and we want to make sure that our students are finding their, their home base and where they're going to be most comfortable and happy. Heather, I'm sure many students are going to find that answer incredibly helpful. This is something that Darian in Florida had asked. Tell us about the kind of things that students could get involved with and if they can get involved as early as their freshman year. One of the things that I love about Cornell Cal's is just how active our students are both in and outside of the classroom and the amazing opportunities that they have to apply the knowledge they're gaining from our incredible faculty to real world problems and to be experiencing that as early as their freshman year. Um, so our students have multiple ways to apply that knowledge. One is through undergraduate research, which is a, a large component for any undergraduate here at Cornell, given our, our um, standing as a, a research institution. Students can get involved in research through their faculty members. So just by sitting in and on class and listening to a faculty member explain their research and maybe asking, I'd be really interested in, in working in your lab, or they can even go through the Office of Undergraduate Research, which manages all undergraduate research here at the, at the university. I would caution students that are looking at, freshman, at, at getting into research their freshman year. We typically say, wait until you're after your first semester, um, get your, your feet, get your sea legs under you, learn about time management. Um, and some labs will wait until a sophomore year before hiring a, a student into a research lab just to make sure they've had that opportunity to acclimate to campus. But there are definitely opportunities for fr even freshmen to be involved in research if that's something they would really like to pursue. There's also, um, when we talk about research, we typically think of um, you know, being on campus in a lab, either for credit or for pay, which are both options for our students. But there's also faculty-led programs that can travel the globe and conduct research experiments, um, maybe in the Galapagos Islands or in Africa during, this, during winter break, which is a much nicer place than Ithaca sometimes, um, when it's at least warmer. It's beautiful in the snow. Um, but so students can participate in those types of programs as well, a shorter experience, but still a different type of research experience that they can um, participate in. We also have incredible research or internship opportunities. Our Cal Student Services Office is an incredible resource for our students and will help navigate either um, research opportunities, internships, any, any opportunity that a student is looking for. But they work closely with our alumni network to make sure that um, our students, regardless of their year, have the opportunity to participate in an internship or an externship, which is a shorter period of time in any field um, that they may be interested in and expands you know, the, the, the country and now also the globe. Um, we also have our, um, uh, our program called Handshake, which is a way that students can directly connect with alumni virtually, um, which is obviously even more important right now. Um, so there's just ample opportunities for students, regardless of their um, standing or their year here at Cornell, to be able to participate in hands-on experiences. We also have many opportunities on campus, um, including our, our organic student-run farm, our or student organizations as well, for students to be able to uh, participate in. Great, thank you. 
Now, Nicholas from California has an interesting question about the kind of students who will be coming to the College of Ag and Life Sciences. Do you have a lot of students that are coming just from rural areas? And would it be hard for urban students to be able to find a home at Cal's? A great question. And um, I'll kind of go back to our New York State question and um, talking about geographic diversity. We are looking for students from all over the country, all over the globe, all different backgrounds. So we definitely have a cohort of students that are coming from rural areas, maybe agricultural backgrounds, but we also have a large group of students that are coming from urban and suburban areas as well. And a wonderful thing about CALS is no matter what your background is, you're going to be able to find your home here. Um, and that's also true for our curriculum as well in that we are a school of agriculture and life sciences. Our students will have a foundation in the life sciences, but they can pursue any interest. Um, and so we have a wide variety of interests, a wide variety of backgrounds that are coming into Cornell Cows. We are a bit rural in our area, so it may take um, some acclimation just in terms of our area, but we are a wonderful city with connections to our agricultural background um, outward. Um, so students will be able to find a, a mix of city as well as rural um, styles um, around our area. And so I think it's just a wonderful mix of backgrounds um, and anyone can find their home here. Absolutely. So Juliana from Wisconsin asks about, tell her about some unique extracurricular opportunities that may be available. So I've talked a lot about internships and, and um, research. I haven't talked too much about study abroad, which is um, obviously away from campus, but it's definitely something that makes us unique. We have a program called CALS Exchange, which students are able to participate in that's directly tied to our programs here at CALS. Um, and so that's a really op amazing opportunity for our students to travel the globe and, and be directly connected to their major and be taking coursework for their major, maybe halfway across the globe. Clo more closely on, like, on campus, we have, um, Cornell Wide has over a thousand different student run organizations Within CALS, we have 60 of those organizations, but students are able to participate in any of those groups, um, regardless of if they're a CAL student or not. And some of the unique ones that we have include our Hortus Forum, which is our plant science group. We also have um, our Block and Bridal Club, which are more agriculturally focused, but we also have incredible opportunities focused more on um, we have a, a, um, entrepreneurship clubs. We have group organizations that go down into the local community and work with school students in the Ithaca area. Um, we have our honor system. Society. So there's a, a great mix of just student run organizations um, on the college level. And then we also have amazing opportunities, like I said, to get your hands dirty. You can work at the organic student run farm. Um, you can also participate. We have an amazing farmers market that's on campus in the fall and the spring. So just a huge variety of opportunities for students to get involved in um, and any interest, any um, group you can, you can participate in. Also, if you can't find the group that you're interested in, you can also create a group um, if you haven't found it. So um, there's the, the sky's the limit for what students can do outside of the classroom. Wonderful. And the last question that I have for you today is from Julia in Massachusetts, who asks, what kind of careers do Cal students end up in? Oh my goodness, everything. Um, I think that's the incredible part about CALS and there's a wonderful resource. If you go on our website, um, each of our majors, um, I think it's programs and degrees, you can look at each of our programs and see some of the um, careers that their students in those specific majors are going into. And they span everything. Even you would think, you know, I'm gonna look at agricultural sciences and they'll probably say a farmer. Oh my goodness, no, there's farmers, educators, consultants, um, engineers, all within one major. And so I think that's the really amazing part about Cornell Cal's is that you just have so many opportunities that you may be focused on one end goal when you're starting as a freshman, but that can change and morph into some amazing opportunities that may take you down a path you never thought possible. And so we're really preparing you for an adventure after you leave Cornell. Our student services team they are um, a wonderful resource for students as they're progressing through their time here and planning what their next step is after Cornell. So as I mentioned, our alumni network is there to support students and talk about what their area of interests are, what courses maybe you want to think about or opportunities you want to take part in um, if you're interested in a specific area. Also looking at your resume um, and helping even through if you're looking at graduate school. And so it's, it's hard to nail down and say this is what Cal students do because they're doing such a variety of amazing things and making a huge impact 
both on the local, national, and global levels. And that's, um, that's something that's really fun to watch as well from an admissions perspective to see students come in either as freshmen or transfer students and then see and hear about the amazing things they're doing as alumni when they leave Cornell. So good, so good in every way, thank you. Um, and just thank you in general, Heather. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. And I also wanted to thank you students who submitted questions as well. If you have additional questions that we weren't able to get to, no worries. Send us an email at admissions at cornell.edu and we'd be happy to answer it or to forward it on to Heather and her team if it's Cal specific. Also, if you go to admissions.cornell.edu, there'll be an opportunity to chat with us during business hours and uh, be able to connect with somebody right in the admissions office through a live chat. Also, if you want more information about CALS, I really encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to go to admissions.cornell.edu slash virtual visit and be able to dive deeper through the CALS information session. But until then, we really wish you all the best in the college process and truly hope that yours, you and yours are safe and well. Take care, everyone.